Hey guys, Nikhil here from Home for Now. Recently, I published a software review or a software walkthrough of this app called Super Boulder. And I've got an incredible chance to interview their founder, Arvind, who has been in the interior space for quite some time. Uh, he was part of one of like the first interior design startups in India called Ferdo. And right now he's working on Super Boulder. So, Arvind, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. First things first, I mean, <laughs> your, your app is awesome. So the website, the app, really well done. But before that, uh, before we get into you know how you went about building it and all, can you tell me a bit about yourself? Yeah. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me uh, over to this interview. Really enjoyed watching your uh, uh, video of our uh, platform. And um, it has started driving us traffic. We are at the right spot in terms of going to market, okay. trying to figure out and glad it caught your attention and you know uh, really happy <laughs> great so let's let's get into you know your background and i mean how you got in like what's your journey to getting to start building super Bolta? fantastic yes so i've been a 3x entrepreneur okay. so i did my um, computer science engineering worked with infosys for about five and a half years like two large clients both in japan as well as in us uh, with goldman sachs and from there, I came back, started my first venture, 2008. Uh, so since then, I've been in the startup circles. Um, I've worked in totally four startups, three of them which I have founded. Um, my last venture was in 2015 called Ferdo, where we did end-to-end -end home interior design and execution. Uh, there, I got to work very closely with uh, homeowners who had purchased homes and were looking to get beautiful home interiors. And uh, that's where I saw that there is um, there was a way we could make an impact. The best part over there was we were able to create so many beautiful homes, you know, and we were able to drive tremendous satisfaction for the customers. Like imagine getting a 4.5 star rating, you know, about within two years of starting. Um, the journey itself, there itself was quite tough in terms of the initial days. And then we got the right processes, right set of team. So we built a very good venture there. And I come from a computer science background. I had done my engineering from RV College of Engineering, Bangalore. And I did my computer science there. And uh, the question was, how can you scale this to lot many more homes? The same kind of, uh, um, what do you say, uh, the value that we were able to deliver. Mm -hmm. right? And coming from a computer science background, like any other person you know, who is a graduate in uh, tech, feels that, hey, can I scale this up easily? Right? <laughs> right, and I made that my first mistake with my first startup, where mm -hmm. I thought technology will transform everything. It was an ed tech space, mm -hmm. and I learned that technology is just an enabler. Right, you need to to solve the problem. You need to really get down and understand, you know, what people want. Right, and those small nuances is what kind of help. And this is what uh, I learned at Ferdo, right, where I understood how the interior design business works on the ground. How, what does the customer expect? What does the interior designer expect? And how does the brands and merchants see, right? And I was able to see there were like a lot of gaps and there was a good win-win possible for all people in the ecosystem. And that's where Super Boulder, you know, the idea of Super Boulder was born. Okay. Yeah. So you started working on Super Boulder when exactly? So we started in 2017. Okay. I'm going to ask you some specific industry related questions, sure. but uh, what, what was initially your thought process on, you know, what was your initial vision? And first question is that. And second is, how, did, how has that changed as you've continued building it out? Yeah. So um, when we started Super Bolter, I had seen a key gap when I was at Ferdo itself, right? And uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to create a digital twin or a digital replica for every home on the planet. Okay. Imagine your house, I give you a digital copy of it. Right. Now, to that digital copy, what can I do? I should be able to apply any kind of a design, color, paint, paint that home very easily, mm -hmm. right? Apply wallpaper, styles, and see how it looks. Okay. Right? So, these were some of the key insights that I received when I was running and the gaps, right? And insights are what build startups. Right. right problems and then you see this is a problem in the market you find some insights so initially when i started super Boulder, it was uh, the vision has not changed we want to make every home on the planet beautiful we want to truly democratize design 
democratize anything is being overloaded today especially <laughs> in the interior space right what does true democratization mean is anyone is able to do it very easily right so that was uh, uh, the thought behind super boulder right so f- how it has evolved since then that we've seen that we can touch upon other uh, related industries and other many other use cases have emerged mm-hmm. right so we are going after the interiors use case as our first attempt okay so let's talk a little bit more about this the reason i'm so curious is yeah so 2017 is a time when already back then you had some incredible interior design softwares so you have uh, for say entry level sort of you have your sketchup yeah paired with some good rendering softwares for more advanced pro level you have your autocad yeah. your uh, maya whatever it is yeah and uh, i mean obviously like not much was existing for you know normal folks like us but then say someone does want to learn and actually take it seriously you have always have sketchup which was ubiquitous like yeah. any any damn interior design company i go to yeah the first thing they'll do is open up a sketchup and you know, start working it out yeah now that time i think right now sketchup is owned by trimble but i think at that time sketchup was owned by google google yes so how did you even think ke boss i can take on this challenge so uh, two i have two answers one is the industry specific one is from a startup right okay so the industry specific answer is uh, it is a complicated software you Definitely. need to build a certain amount of expertise right we were building the software who i wanted to empower every end customer okay right now end customers are not going to go through a learning curve right whereas if i have to learn sketchup someone has to spend a month or so at least you know going through professional learning okay right so uh, it is a superb software for interior designers and architects okay who can create any kind of s- structure from scratch they can create their models all of that right uh, that's one of the strengths of sketchup we were building this for the end consumer right Pe- people have never done interior design so they don't know to you know construct a house etc for example in sketchup i have to upload a floor plan then i have to draw that entire structure it takes me even it takes an interior designer an hour or two to f- just construct the home right and this is a huge uh, barrier to entry for any end customer right true so what we want to do is give the uh, customers a canvas which is ready to use okay right and uh, this was one differentiation that we have so these were also the gaps with the software which were there at the time yeah exactly yeah right and it is there are maybe 50 60 buttons to learn right yeah 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 just a simple comparison if you've seen any photo editing app back mm-hmm. in the days you had photo I mean, not, you have photoshop yeah and then there is this simple camera app on my phone yeah which just gives me all the filters at the bottom i tap and i get that effect right right right, right. so that hence it becomes end customer friendly right yeah so th- these were some of the gaps that we saw there was no ready to use homes right i okay. have to go stru- uh, construct it okay. and even the thing i need needed uh, uh, professional training okay right and it is it was meant for professionals even professionals have to undergo training to use them yeah 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 and i mean yeah. there's external plugins you have to pay for the software you have to play for the plugins the pl- software has a learning curve the plugin has a learning curve yes, yes. i mean I, i can say all of this because i've seen my wife go through this journey she's an architect yeah so <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, I, yeah i get where you're coming from yeah. so you're like jo phone ka filters hai yes can that be done for interior design yes yes can i make it extremely easy mm-hmm. such that it becomes uh, also very intuitive right it should not uh, like you know one of uh, like this guy don norman right right fantastic book on ui ux and everything you just don't Absolutely. you know there are some experts like them who say hey don't make me think there's another book right so basically how do you make it extremely you know extremely easy simple right a uh, uh, no brainer for anyone to be able to use design right that's what we have been trying to do okay so my next question now coming to today yeah how close do you think you've got we've gotten uh, we've gone through so many cycles mm-hmm. and today we have um thousands of users thousands okay. of end customers architects designers mm-hmm. using the platform today mm-hmm. uh, they are able to get super comfortable with the platform mm-hmm. without any training okay with zero training so you would say you're almost there or you're there we are good to now hit and grow i should okay. say right so okay. um 
I was also about to tell you a uh, startup answer right for uh-huh. big company yeah, or yeah, small sorry. company yeah. right uh-huh. I forgot about that right so, yeah, so it's, it's, Google like, Autodesk these Google, are bloody giants right, right so you take Google and then Facebook launched right Facebook was this guy built up <laughs> in a dorm and then he launched and you know Google tried three four times after that but then this right. guy caught they became the social network yeah exactly right? Facebook did uh, so it's uh, so it didn't bother you much that Google had SketchUp no right so always the, the threat to a startup is another younger startup <laughs> you just don't want to become too old and you stop innovating and then you get lost right, right? and then so these are the things that you have to uh, kind of be head so we said uh, the only way to also compete with anyone else right uh, whatever may come is to put the best product out there right okay there may be uh, other deltas may happen delta plus or delta minus so but we want to uh, we don't worry about competition much Uh, it's a huge, huge open market, right? Across Absolutely. the world, people are still struggling. So I've done my dipstick in across, right? Hong Kong, Singapore, hundred percent, hundred percent, Dubai, US, everywhere. So the problem still exists, and there's no easy solution yet. Okay, so you won't believe this, but on Home by Now, yeah, uh, one of my favorite interior design softwares was not actually SketchUp or Maya. Uh, and when I was using Super Boulder, it reminded me of this. Uh, is this game called Sims Four? Okay. <laughs> and Sims Four has a home building function. Yeah. So you can go into you know infinite mode or something, and you can actually build up a home. Uh-huh. And uh, it's not to metric, of course. But then that the way the layout is done and yeah. very well done. Yeah. YouTube there's a very large community of uh, people trying to you know build beautiful homes. Okay. Inside the Sims Four game. Nice. So I'm curious now to I'm going to ask you the next question, which is yeah. So you're talking about interior design. One of the reasons it's so complex is there is so many variables. Yeah. So you're talking about one is it's 3D. Yeah. There's like 30 different category of products itself. Yeah. Probably hundred categories. I don't know. It's insane. <laughs> uh, yeah, and like I keep seeing newer and newer companies getting more and more innovative products. Yeah. Every single day. Yeah. So how did you even start approaching this problem? Because more than anything as you pointed out correctly it's not necessarily a technology problem it's more of a ui ux problem yeah. a lot more of ux yeah than anything else yeah. because tech is there to build it out but yeah. what are you supposed to build as a very big challenge yes so how, yes. like what was your journey to try to figure it out because i will say this yeah. that uh, i mean you guys can check out the video as well that it is very much close to you know like anyone can do yeah build their it may not be the level of an architect or interior designer yeah. but you can actually get an idea of what's going on so yeah. how do you even start approaching that problem yeah so um, users have been at the center of our business okay right? and they are the best teachers for us and so what we've done is uh, some of the mistakes of my previous startup we try to eliminate by being continuously in the market right uh, work closely with an end user so we have tested every version out in the market right now if i have to just give you a shorter timeline of what has happened in the recent past is it used to take 60 to 90 minutes for someone to learn how to use super bolter wow would you believe that okay right probably how, how many minutes did it take for you to pick up I, if right? you i don't know so guys yeah. i had actually i had a call with him i had reached out to him linkedin on linkedin and while he was explaining to me what super bolter was in that call i was able to figure out a lot of stuff right so uh, it was like what we had a 4 minute call yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we, our target is can someone pick it up in 2 minutes okay or 3 minutes right okay so uh, from 60 90 we got down to 28 okay 28 to 13 i said 13 minutes impossible that means i need to have a huge workforce to train every person right correct 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 and correct. finally it came down to under that 3 or 4 okay is it okay now it's good to go right Okay. Let's go test it out. There will be still some people who will need a lot more help videos. Right, right, right. right. So we're still making that bite-sized help videos, right? Uh, you know, which can help them get started. Right. And right. entire house 3D is a little more complex compared to a single room. Right. So these are things. So we have all of these, and now we are seeing how we can package these different things to the customers. But we, today we don't have to train anyone to use the platform. Makes sense. Right. Which means uh, we've gone past the minimum viable product. Okay. right and now we are going towards getting some kind of a product market fit like how right. many people can we now impact through this platform okay right so, so what was the approach taken like you know how did you like i really want you to explain to me right yes. like so you had sketchup at one side yeah 
and then on other side you have maybe have a carpenter who is like yahan pe ye kar sakte hai wo kar sakte hai yeah like <laughs> how do you start bridging this gap like where do you start What? yes so uh, two of the most uh, painful things with uh, interior design is uh, there are so many categories of product right you take a living room you have a tv unit you have a sofa set or couch right minimum then you have the coffee table you're putting a rug you have a paint and wallpaper then lights all of these right now it becomes as you keep adding items it becomes more and more complex to visualize even for interior designers it becomes very difficult to visualize so they rely on software correct right? and back in the days you had the complicated you know software which helped them and for a business it's fine they are making uh, it's a bread and butter situation they will learn right the complex software right and on the other side uh, so, so for us if we have to make it extremely user friendly so what we did is we got rid of many of those complexities went into the market and tested worked with the customers right invited certain people uh, some of them over right they said we'll give you the free designs etc and there were some of them were very curious uh, market usually helps startups a lot right you can see from shark tank and true, true, things that true. are happening so which is very very true right and there is always people who will back the underdogs or someone who is emerging right and also india as a culture has been like super good at that so it's very easy to get people to come and uh, share their knowledge share their time mm-hmm. right uh, so we were iterating continuously with uh, with the end customers okay. we were uh, so we had employed every almost every aspect of design thinking right and human computer interaction right okay so these are like some of the buzzwords uh, in the market right and i know about them because i didn't d- use them in my first startup <laughs> right there was okay. nothing called mvp we didn't know many things we right. were uh, just very short 2008 we started that venture 2009 most promising startup in the country mm-hmm. 2010 we shut right right so before that uh, three years i've just lived in new york mm-hmm. had the best time of my life working with goldman sachs mm-hmm. and now after that venture i'm thinking what have i done wrong right <laughs> i've spent all my money in right. building that venture right and we won events so it gave you the glamour and all of that and then we are here i am shutting down and signing off uh, documents with uh, closing papers space. yeah closing papers so but then the learning is what you carry forward right that and the learning was that like was got to be in the market got to speak yeah got to let the market it inform took, your product it took one more startup after that to learn that right <laughs> so my learning after the first venture was oh you need money to build a venture yeah passion alone is not enough right so i mean yeah so, and then you give reasons why certain things failed oh we were ahead of time there were certain things we didn't know so we said okay we need to do better research mm-hmm. so all that happened two startups later realized it's not money it's not uh, passion mm-hmm. right you need to create value Right. right so these two all these are needed ingredients then now we said we need to set our focus on value like when ferdo we want to give amazing beautiful sexy homes was uh, value right. now around that build the business around that right whatever you need whatever you don't need right same thing with super boulder what is that value can an anchor can you design by yourself right so we did not deviate from that and we know if that happens then everything else falls in place right So that's a pretty cool approach. So let's talk about today. Now, one of the reasons we started Homebar now yeah. was uh, even today it's true that after you purchase your real estate, getting to a livable home, yeah, and then scaling that up to maybe a dream home, yeah, the whole process is in itself like you know doing a startup. It's like a yeah. lot of money, a lot of time. yeah a lot of headaches yeah a lot of people you know taking you for a ride yeah it's a very opaque industry yes i'm sure you you have experienced this yeah, as yeah. a consumer and as someone who's built a company yes. multiple companies in this space yeah so tell me this like how are you you know taking super boulder to at least try and start solving that problem how are you bringing some more transparency in this process yeah so there is two parts to this right one is the transparency materials you know costing mm-hmm. is one side the other side is the design itself right these are the two very large elements from a end customer perspective because Correct. most of the times uh, customers are not able to express what they want right okay. if you ask anyone majority of the time they would say uh, i need a contemporary design 
but then when you get a little more deeper you'll see oh this is the kind of style kind of industrial right so the the, the jargon in the interior design industry is not very well known correct right that is one so there is both the design problem with an end customer and also the what is the costing because they have to make a decision based on that right so we started with the design problem and recently we've tried to solve the costing and other aspects also right now you see this beautiful interior designs which keep coming up on instagram and others and even at ferdo we got like really wide variety of interior designs so but that those are all coming from interior designers so they are one of the most essential pieces in the ecosystem right. right it's like anyone can play a guitar but then there are those musicians and right. you know who are doing that as a, a, a business and who can create those beautiful pieces right? right similarly there may be a small percentage of people who are creative that way maybe half a percent and they become actors musicians right interior designers and architects right and Absolutely. then if you look at it that way then there's another 95 99.5% of the market which Correct. needs them correct right and there was no easy way to connect these right right not every person goes to an interior designer because there are other aspects there right? correct it is expensive correct right? absolutely it, it is more expensive than going to a carpenter right 100% right so but then a carpenter is not an interior designer he, they will not be able to do the color matching color wheel many things many aspects right right so how do we bridge this gap is you know was the first question for me okay right so we said if i'm able to build a platform uh, which does similar something similar to what itunes or spotify has done for musicians right so anyone can access design back in the days people have to buy a cd or a tape right how many could afford right absolutely a lot yeah. of people used to download from you know mp3s from the web all that right so we are trying to say hey let's get these creative people on board hmm. they are contributing full design templates okay which means uh i can take a look uh, scroll through all the designs which are already available on super bolter mm-hmm. one click i can try li- living room design bedroom design maybe within a, a day i'll be able to get two three ideas for my entire ho- home done right so this way you're removing a big design hurdle right right otherwise the end customer when you have to make a decision on 10 15 products it becomes too difficult absolutely right? yeah so this was on the design side so we said let's get all these creative people build software which does this you know one click apply to their home mm-hmm. then uh, give them option not everyone wants to go with templatized designs mm-hmm. right they want to bring in their personality correct allow them to modify very easily correct and to modify you need a product catalog etc so that way absolutely yes what we did that was done for the design front design front right mm-hmm. the other th- reason like you said it's very opaque because there is such a wide variety of products available right and uh, who do you go to how much you know you, how do you get that information so we want to make this information available in one place okay. right and educate the end customers about the various materials which are available in the market various brands what is the uniqueness of each of those products and so that they are able to make a decision themselves okay right so we've got the pricing right we have given for uh, even for modular furniture what we have done is we have taken an average price mm-hmm. for various say for example you want to go with uh, duco with this kind of apply or mdf hdf we have created those uh, combinations already right up to 6 to 8 combination which kind of makes sense right right like for example someone who is going with uh, green ply or century ply the top end will also pick the uh, right kind of you know laminate or finish uh, laminate and the hardware Right, right 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 so we've given these combinations you know right. okay there's a green ply top end i think it's called mr or something and then you have half lay and headache right in the best in, hardware in there also it's the top end right. so we created these unique combinations so the customer finds it a little more easier right right hey which one do i want and we have given a clear distinction of how much the price a wardrobe starts from 60000 rupees up to 2 and a half lakh 3 lakh rupees it can go you know right. for the same di- dimensions right so you have created a lot of these permutations and combinations already into the product yeah so we have uh, tried to put it very really intelligently such okay. that it doesn't become a burden for the customer right 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 so these are some of the things that they are doing so you get confidence in designing yourself and you get and you have seen cost yeah you can see the cost how much it works you can take that and we can help you in the next level of discussions right and what i feel also about cost is it's not you know um, oh 
दिस कंपनी सॉफ्टवेयर इतना बता रहा है वाइज योर्स फाइव परसेंट टेन परसेंट मोर आई फील द डिफरेंस ऑफ दैट फाइव टेन परसेंट विल बी दैट पर्टिकुलर ब्रांड दैट ब्रांड हैज अर्न ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम राइट दे विल से हे दिस इज द काइंड ऑफ सर्विस वी गिव यू दैट्स वाई वी आर फाइव परसेंट मोर करेक्ट समन मे गिव इट फॉर अ लिटल लेस से न्यू कंपनी विच इज एमर्जिंग वॉन्ट्स टू सेट द फुट इन राइट राइट बट द कस्टमर नाउ हैज एटलीस्ट अ बॉल पार्क हाउ मच माई होम वोट कॉस्ट ओके so my next question would be that that i mean in ferdo you executed a lot of projects yeah. you learned a lot of these things so talking about our transparency and pricing a little bit more yeah so according to you your what you are telling me is my home if i make on super boulder and the exact same home if i try to get it executed your 5 10% plus or minus there from a pricing perspective is that right the variation is based on you know uh, for example who you kind of tie up with right in the market also right there are people who are able to do for various price ranges what Correct. we've done is for a certain level of quality mm-hmm. right we've got the best prices in the market okay like hey here are the two levels of quality that i want oh so my next question is do you also execute these projects no we have partners and panel okay. the projects go to them so okay. so when you use this is, we've just covered the software bit mm-hmm. right now what happens is the customer who's coming onto the platform while there are some people who are just trying to visualize how their future home is going to look but mm-hmm. many of them are looking at a serious solution right? right so they have designed and either they have a carpenter who they want to go and give this to mm-hmm. right or they may have other firms third is we have our own curated list of firms okay m panel with us right okay. there are we have tied up with about four factories at the back end okay so the project goes to them okay right they execute perfect okay right there are contractors so we want to break it down something like the a ratio model depending on oh i need an interior designer i need a contractor i need the factory or this brand so these extra pieces will cost you a little more so you pick and choose another way we bring about transparency is there is a new feature it's not rolled out yet but uh, there is no one platform where i can see how is this interior designer or brand or merchant rated right right so that's another piece which is coming up where we going to list the curated and the market will decide rate them on this platform interesting Makes Think sense. of it like Swiggy for homes. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. So design your home and get it built as well. Yeah. So that is the next big leg which is coming up. So mm-hmm. these prices also help here. Mm-hmm. For example, say the estimated price from Super Boulder says it is about twelve lakh rupees for mm-hmm. this three BHK. Mm-hmm. In the next step, I would see, oh, there is someone who is willing to do it for eleven. There is mm-hmm. someone who is doing the same spec for fourteen. Mm-hmm. Then there there will be a pros and cons. This is a thirty year old firm. Right, which right. is doing. These are the materials they use. These are the reviews. They are four point four star rated. Right, this is a new firm which is coming. This is not still rated. Right. That way. So let's talk about my next question. Uh, my next point. Uh, this is related to the industry. So, two thousand fifteen. You must have seen this. Fifteen to I think twenty. Yeah. The number of interior design companies which came got funded have become huge. Is crazy. Yeah. But what's also crazy amongst a lot of them is. Uh, the reviews mm-hmm. <laughs> like online reputation management companies make a living just because of these <laughs> interior design guys <laughs> so uh, it's been a challenge for them to uh, you know really deliver quality and all of that uh, one of the reasons probably is lot of things can go wrong when you're doing interior design there's just so many variables yeah even if 5% things go wrong that's yeah. like 30 things going wrong because there's like 2000 variables right yeah so Like you guys are very clear that boss design हमारे साथ करना है yeah. execution में will allow you to choose yeah but what how are you going to manage that part of the equation you know those getting those ensuring even when the person moves into the home he gets a great experience or yeah. are you planning to I don't know get involved in the execution like how will it really work because yeah. I've seen a lot of good good interior design companies the thing yeah. is because of the number of projects because of the number of variables even yeah. variables even 5% means they have uh, 5% screw up is they screw up the project yes yes so how how are you you know planning to manage that side of the equation yeah. i think it's a fantastic question to be you know to be fair to everyone right it is a very complex project right and uh, it needs to be done within a certain timelines right? right and there are so many elements that go in right screw ups are possible i think but what i've also learned from my own experience in managing very complicated systems at goldman sachs was it is all expectation management and right amount of customer support and very prompt action you cannot delay you cannot keep escalating stuff right right and you take an action at that point say you delivered and one of the shutters 
is scratched. Right? It should be a no questions asked, very immediate response ki shutter change hua. Why let the customer suffer for another weeks? Right. And then it just that anger keeps growing, right? Putting in efficient processes, one. Second, curation of the right brand partners, right? And this is understanding with our brand partners also. Right. And we've hence we have tied up with factories who have like made significant investment in their own venture. Right. And they also want to be uh, they have a little bit of customer centricity. Right, right, right. right. So actually, frankly speaking, to a for a factory to focus on every individual customer is going to be very difficult, right? For right. they want to process 50 homes, 100 homes per month, right. right? You're talking about, you can imagine the amount of plywood that is getting cut in the factory. Right, right, right. So that, so how do you bridge these two? Right. Is what, uh, you know, so one is the curation. Mm -hmm. Our partners are very well aware, mm -hmm. you know, what this can do. Mm -hmm. uh, we we uh, feel we can be like highly scalable uh, platform. That means uh, they were also going to get a lot more projects from us. Right. So this, it's a win-win for all. And we have to keep everyone satisfied in the ecosystem. Right. As a platform, if we are unsatisfied with any particular brand partner, right, or mm -hmm. a merchant, right, then uh, two things may happen. One is uh, they may get delisted. Correct. One, or if the customers are happy, they may rate them lower. Correct. So things like that. These these are the things that could happen. Right. right. But then it's a it, it is also a longer uh, engagement with uh, when it comes to an interior project. Mm -hmm. This is an example I used to use in my previous venture. Is in the first month of marriage, at least once the husband and wife have fought. <laughs> right. <laughs> So we are talking about a three month engagement. Right? Right. There is going to be ups and downs. Right. Some part has become very, very white collared, right? You know, the design and all of that. But some of it is still blue collar. Right. right. And their uh, processes, etc. will they'll still take a little more time. Right. You know, get these. So that's the variable, you know, that happens. Right. But if you have a firm which can uh, offset those issues. Right. With great service warranties and guarantees, then you're sorted. Right. Right. Just that you so you're being very, very mindful about firms you're partnering with at each level for each product. Yes. Okay. Yes. They, they okay. need to have very deep customer centricity, mm -hmm. and they should also believe in our vision. Right. Right. It's not they're not looking at how uh, we got a few orders and then we don't know who this guy is. Right. It's not that. <laughs> so they are very well aligned. So some of our partners like Schneider Electric. Right. Right. Or uh, Wellspun. They're like right. public companies, global and uh, national, right? Right, right. So we have uh, very good relationships with the management team. Mm -hmm. They know where we are. So it's easy to put in these processes or, you know, the understanding in place. Okay. And even they want to acquire market. So our vision is aligned. They want to make massive impact by their set of products. Right, right, right. right. Like for example, Wellspun's uh, yeah. interlocking tiles. Yeah, the floor tiles, yeah. amazing category for uh, any... Uh, renovation projects or Absolutely. apartments, right? We've done a lot of those projects where within two days we've transformed homes, mm -hmm. right? Where in one day we showed the customer, you know, like these six, seven tile options that can go. They have about larger, some 50, 60 options, something that goes well and the customer is able to make a decision on a few lakh rupees project within like 20 minutes. Wow. Okay. Right. And then these guys just swoop down extremely professional uh, execution. Right and all clean done. Okay. Yeah. So if you're very very clear with your values and you're aligning with partners who have similar values. Yeah. So even if screw ups do happen, you know they are able to fix it or rectify yeah, it yeah. as you prompt as yeah. you said promptly yeah. and efficiently. Yeah. yeah. So I've worked in the US. US is a very very um, massive consumer market. Right. Right. You have a no questions asked return even for things like apparel. <laughs> After one month of usage, right? Right. So you can see that if you have to build consumer brands, you, consumer has to be at the heart of it. Right? Absolutely. And you manage your risks and all of that uh, accordingly and then you should be able to crack it. Okay. Let's move on to my next question. So one of the things which I really loved about your product was uh, I could really feel and I mean I've seen this for a lot of software companies in India. We, we do build amazing global products. So... This felt like a global product and it's in the interior space. So it was very yeah. refreshing for me to see. Because yeah. most uh, software I've tried in the interior space, uh, either they were rehashed versions of, you know, things like SketchUp. Uh, they have probably got source code of some open source project and they've tweaked it. Or they're just not good. Yeah. Like they feel like it was the software was made for a user in 2004. Yeah. So Super Bolter, on the other hand, did feel that, you know, it, 
it, it felt like it had global potential. Yeah. So is this something you're mindful of and are you planning to scale this across the globe? Is that how your vision is? Yeah, so we want to be the Canva for homes. <laughs> right, yeah. Right, okay. so Canva is a global product. Right. Uh, we want our vision, like I said, was to make, you know, uh, every home on the planet beautiful. Right. Every home, any person, anywhere, across, whether he's living in a hut or a palace. Right. right? Uh, home is just a starting point. Then you have offices, right. restaurants, you know, shops right. which open up. There are huge inefficiencies there. Correct. Right? And there is a way we can, and you know, so, so the vision is global. And we, even today we get traffic from around the globe, right? okay. even though we do not have products right. uh, for those uh, geographies right. uh, listed. But then we are getting traffic from across. Okay. But we want to win Bangalore before we, you know, go uh, anywhere else. So uh, that leads very nicely to my next question. So you brought, brought up a parallel with Canva. Yeah. I think I, that's the playbook which I guess you'll have to go for. Uh, like how they scale it. But uh, let's talk about yeah. this. How is... Yeah, sorry, you were saying It's that. a fantastic playbook, what Canva did. Right. Uh, so, I mean, I started this even before I knew about Canva. <laughs> right. I know Canva. Someone told me, hey, this is like Canva. And then, you know, I picked up that. And it made very easy to even con tell right. someone what we are building. Right. Like Canva for Homes. Uh, highly respected company and uh, very Absolutely. inspirational. Yeah. So, talking about that, the thing with uh, interior design or construction or anything related to home improvement is every region has its own nuance. Yeah. How are you like? How are you? You know, planning to navigate that part like eventually, or are you build, Are you thinking? Are you mindful about this as you're building features? The good thing for us is uh, today, design has become global. Okay. Right. The design styles. Right. right. And what is available in Italy is also available here in similar styles. Right. Right. So now design. Uh, while there are maybe ten to twenty percent of. Uh, local flavors, mm -hmm. right? You know, something in Jaipur or Kerala style, where a lot of wood. But you can map that maybe to the Balinese style a little more. Right. Okay, right? There also they use a lot of, you know, Burmese tea, you can know, things like that, right? So uh, design has become global. Right? Everyone is exposed to uh, that much more design and they want these in their homes, right? So that that's working in our favor, okay. Right. So for us to glo go global on design will not be that much of a challenge, okay. Right. The product. The next part is a design is composed of products, mm -hmm. right? There are that many shades. If you take wooden flooring, right. There are that many shades. Maybe sixty shades are there, which are available here, which is available there. Right. The names are you know you'll have California oak and things like that, right? <laughs> So yeah, that's here. basically the difference. Yeah. yeah. So you have the materials. Okay. So that means the styles are built on these ingredients which are available. Okay. Those colors are kind of fixed or limited. Right. Right. You take right. today uh, Winchester sofas and things like that. It's coming from that particular region. But you Correct. get that here and some companies like Chester, make right, right, Chester's right. and then you have Urban Ladder also. Like, right. You know, have an amazing collection of uh, Winchester's. So according to you, like the, already the process has started, whether you do something or not, like it has become a very global thing, design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is a global opportunity. We want to go after the global markets, okay. right? Um, we're just getting our, uh, the product ready before you scale something, mm -hmm. right? Um, we saw this with some other ventures in the past that, okay. you know, and then I'm coming from a startup world. So you... Uh, see so many case studies which are happening. So we don't want to repeat some of the mistakes. Right? We don't want to take uh, unnecessarily huge amount of say capital infusion of VCs, money, right? So we want to know really, you know, what we are building, whether it is delivering value and getting the right money at the right time. Right. That way. Yeah. So let me ask you my next question. This is something actually which my wife asked me. Yeah. So she's an architect. Yeah. And uh, of course, she uses a combination of SketchUp and V-Ray. Yeah pays expense or licensing fee for both of them yeah and uh, she liked your product but she said like can i can i create 2d drawings from this can i create photorealistic renders from this yeah so are you guys planning out a professional offering as well some of these are in a, in the works okay right uh, so you will actually be opening this up even for your customers is what you're saying sorry these features like photorealistic renders working drawings yeah it, renders take um, huge server there's a huge server cost to it. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So it's probably going to be a paid service. Okay. Unless there is maybe a VC who says no, just pumps. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. But then, yeah, we want to you know make sure it is uh, viable uh -huh. as a thing. So, but we are working on uh, our rendering features also, right? Okay. Where you get a more realistic renders. 
and what about 2D drawings and all like can it be extracted like I, these my are, question these is all, you, these are all in the roadmap okay so will it be roadmap. like a separate pro offering or how are you planning to do it initially everything will be free okay as you progress right okay. and then we see where exactly how much we are able to deliver so anything we launch as a test right, right? so usually we've kept that as free okay because we need to be like really sure whether it has worked well for the customers and then you can see how you can turn this into a freemium model right you know paid models do we have interior designers and architects who are having a ball yeah, right? yeah. There's, there's one person who's done i put maybe about 60 plus projects mm -hmm. in the last maybe one half years wow on using super bowl okay. right wow so we have some regulars who come in they, they use this like a pre-sales tool also <laughs> so right so you're able to really show a concept very quickly compared to others who are taking uh, so much more time right. and just gathering requirements right? right so you're able to close sales much quickly right right pretty cool pretty cool yeah okay one final question so this was related to brands yeah so you have like 30 40 product categories listed on the yeah on the platform i'm sure it's, it's gonna increase plus. yeah <laughs> it's got 70 plus okay yeah, yeah. so okay. like w what would you like to say so a lot of uh, some brand owners do watch our videos so what okay. would you like to say to some of these brand owners, what is in there for them? Maybe the brand owners, maybe dealers, yeah. what's in there for them? See, the great part of our platform is we have thousands of ready to move in homes, right? Actually, lakhs of the ready to move in homes. And we are able to attract end customers onto the platform. And mm -hmm. they are looking at products of various companies. So we have analytics which tells us um, how many products of Urban Ladder got tried in the last few days, last few months. Ah, so we have okay. we have um, analytics for everything that is happening. Every click, we know you know uh, how the user's journey is progressing. So we were very mindful from day one that we want to be data driven mm -hmm. rather than just build something on the gut. Mm -hmm. So everything that is happening at Super Bolter is driven by data. Right. Right. So whether it's ads which are running or you know the usage of the product which features this. Now coming to brands. So what happens is just that access to the customers. Brands are looking to put their product to the end customers. Right. Uh, many of the brands are able to channel this only through an interior designer or an architect. As right? of now, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? Because uh, it it involves certain amount of uh, knowledge that is needed, which directly an end customer may not be able to understand. Right. right. So we're trying to solve some of these gaps. Right. I, I was at Astec, met some fabulous MDs of some fabulous uh, companies. Mm -hmm. That's right. I was thinking, oh man, why is this not there in so many homes? And yeah. I, mean, I know so many customers who could uh, afford this. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And it's uh, basically, that's another opacity. Right. The new stuff that keeps coming. They have to just host parties for architects and engineers. Yeah. <laughs> and Correct. educate them to actually get into homes. Correct. As of now, that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then it... And, Architects, designers are also like, you know, uh, they are busy with, okay, they, on one yeah, side yeah. they have to acquire customers, then they have to design their current projects, yeah. there is execution of that project happening on the ground, right? and then there is new flood of products mm. which are coming into the market. Right. right. It becomes difficult, right? So, this one just opens up the highway, okay. right? It is not just that uh, end customers benefit from this, even architects and designers benefit from this. By okay, seeing new and new products. Yes, yeah. yes. So we will be able to uh, showcase the capabilities of that particular product, right? Mm -hmm. And we will be able to, you know, take that to the masses. Right. Makes sense. Uh, one last question. This is more from a technical perspective. So Superbolter worked really well for me. Yeah. And the Chrome browser. But I have a pretty decent machine. Yeah. So, like I have a graphic card and RAM and all of that. Yeah. So like how compatible is it for devices? Yeah. Especially, I mean, you will know this like, I'm sure architects and interior designers are watching this also. Yeah. Like, the machines, they just get bogged down only because of rendering, for example. Yes. Like these hours and hours to yes. render. So how, how have you made it compatible for various machines? And how yeah. accessible is the software? It runs on a Chrome browser. <laughs> <laughs> any Chrome browser, any device? Most Chrome, yeah, any Chrome browser. browser. Uh -huh. And uh, my laptop is a 2014 model right. MacBook. Right. So it works on it. Okay. But the newer machines, which some of my teammates use, it looks even more fabulous, right? Okay. With a little slightly more powerful graphics card, the textures and all look like really beautiful. Okay. Where you not need a render. So we've gotten to a stage, right? Where that, that's also one of the key differentiators with many of the other platforms was the base version is very, very sketchish. 
Okay. And then you need to do a render because right. you know it's very difficult for customer to understand the colors. Right. We have converted the two step process mm -hmm. by just giving you one step. I put and I can see. Right. right. It may not be as uh, great as you know in terms of visual quality as a V-Ray render, which takes hours anyway. Right. So the trade off is do you want to render one view for hours? Or do you want the ability to change 15 colors in seconds? Right, right. So right. we've, this is a trade off. So right. on this side, I can, that means the customer has option to play around a lot more. Right. Right. So that's what we built. Right. Okay. And uh, we have our Android version coming up. Right? Oh, wow. Uh, and it uh, looks 100 times better than the web version. Because oh. here okay. we are able to uh, really. Uh, take the computing power of the devices. So I, I, yeah, I guess I mean because of uh, a lot of games which people end up playing, these devices have become very powerful. Yeah, graphic machines. I'm, I'm you're taking advantage of that. Yes, I think uh, if you take if you see what's happening with Nvidia, right? They're they you know they're just soaring. Uh, they're building some of the best GPUs. Right. And more and more of those are coming into the phones. Right. right? Yeah. So the computing power is increasing very very rapidly, which mm -hmm. means. Uh, our app, even with not even with us doing very little, mm -hmm. the same app after six months or one year mm -hmm. on some other device is going to look even more amazing, <laughs> right? So we just have to make sure we don't screw it up, <laughs> right? 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 Yeah. So, so that's pretty cool. So guys, that's my interview. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing this. Pleasure. Uh, do check out superbolter.com. Uh, pretty cool product. I've done a video on it. You can check it out here. Uh, sorry, here. And uh, I mean, I, I was really impressed, especially because I started using SketchUp and I had to go, if I'm not wrong, doing my engineering to a, do a layout plan project I ended up doing with AutoCAD and SketchUp. It took me hours and hours together to learn how to use it. With Super Bolter, it's pretty cool. It almost feels like a game. <laughs> so, thank you so much and uh, see you guys in our next video.